Imogen, it's so nice to finally meet you in person. <laughs> and I'm super thankful for the opportunity that I had to read your chapter Thank in you. the book, A Letter to the Asian American um, Church. Um, what were your thoughts and um, behind writing your chapter on singleness in the book. Yeah, actually, I suggested that topic to Pastor C when he first came around and kind of started putting together a topic um, for different chapters. He had actually asked me to write about being a leader in the church as a single. But I asked him, hey, how do you feel about me just writing about how churches can shepherd singles in general? Um, okay. And I think I proposed that idea because as an unmarried, early 30s female in the church, um, I had been feeling myself that it's really hard to find a place. Hmm. Um, I knew what I was witnessing, not just at my own church, but in other churches that my friends were attending to, was that while church programs are really geared towards family, hmm. family units, mm -hmm. so whether it's um, young married couples with or without children mm -hmm. or you know as they get older or recent grads right but what I was noticing was that those who are kind of older but unmarried and mm -hmm. don't have a nuclear family within the church it was hard for them to find a place to go mm -hmm. including myself mm -hmm. so when I was transitioning off of being on staff at my church I kind of felt like an orphan mm. at a church that I had attended for 10 years yeah. because I didn't know exactly where I belong. Mm -hmm. And so that's what kind of drove me to want to write a chapter. Um, I had a lot of thoughts about, you know, church as a family and how that really is the answer to a lot of people feeling orphaned in the church mm -hmm. um, and how it's not just you know, unmarried young adult singles, but it's also people who find themselves alone in various seasons of life for mm. very different reasons. And how how can the church really come alongside people who don't have a nuclear family with them so that they can see the church as their family? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, um, you do ministry at your church mm -hmm. and I'm sure you have singles in your mm -hmm. ministry. And so do you feel like you've noticed that this is something that they feel at your church too mm. um and you know how have you kind of walked alongside singles at your church yeah yeah i think that's why reading your chapter was really helpful gave a lot of good insights into some of the things that singles might be going through at our church and our church is predominantly families mm -hmm. so yeah it was very very helpful to think through. Um, it sparked a lot of um, good conversations that I was able to have with some of the singles at our church and just asking them, you know, about like, what is your experience at church? You know, what are some things that are hard? What are some things that are encouraging? Um, yeah, and they shared some really helpful things that I could think are helpful to me as a leader at our church. Um, you know, just sharing how like some if they're like in a small group, a mixed small group with other women and, you know, some are just only, they're all moms and they're only sharing about their kids, mm -hmm. how it can be a little isolating yeah. or a little uh, lonely. Yeah. So that was helpful, you know, so maybe we can structure our small groups a little bit different mm -hmm. by maybe having a couple single gals in a group with yeah. other moms or or just to be mindful of things like that mm -hmm. um yeah and i think it was helpful for me as a leader just to think about um yeah just how i interact and minister to the singles um specifically in women's ministry but just at, um in our church as a whole um just to be really mindful of mm -hmm. how i talk to them yeah. and the things that I choose to talk to them about and I definitely would not want to convey that you know being single is any lesser than or that they're not going to be complete until they get married through conversations that mm -hmm. I have with them so your chapter is very good oh. and sparking a lot of good things for me to think about and to work on yeah, yeah. I do find that um, in the church I think and I talk a little bit about this in my chapter too but I think we all know that singleness is a gift, mm -hmm. but I think culturally many of our churches don't really operate that way. Mm. And um, I think even just the, a lack of nuance when it comes to, you know, there may be older singles who desire marriage mm -hmm. and desire to have a family, but still can be content where they are. Yeah. But I think sometimes yeah. if you express desire, mm -hmm. you're almost seen as you're not being content where you are, mm -hmm. you know, or yeah. so I think some of that nuance there is lacking or mm. 
I think sometimes well-meaning older um, <sighs> families and the church will um, ask only questions about marriage right, <laughs> to right. singles, uh, right. which definitely conveys that idea of, okay, like we need you to get married, right? Because right. that's right. the most important thing. Right, yeah. right. I mean, have you found that um, like it's hard, it, it takes conscious effort to not talk about those things? It does yeah. a little, and which is kind of sad, mm -hmm. actually, but it's been good in the last few years, especially for me to be thinking, you know, I can just be more conscious of, you know, how maybe I'm not trying to say that. I think that, you know, you're your life is not going to be happy until mm -hmm. you get married. But I could see how comments or things that I say could be taken that way. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But I think personally, too, um, just thinking on this has been good for me as a mom mm. because I have kids that are ranging from, like, junior high to college, you know? And so the college kids are yeah. starting to get in that season of maybe dating, maybe not. Um, but I'm, I'm just really thankful just to take time to think through, you know, like, I really want to convey to them that I don't know what God has for them and mm -hmm. they might be single and I can be equally happy for yeah. them in that stage, mm -hmm. you know, or if that season or if that's, you know, what God calls them to be in or to be married. Um, so I actually went home and just asked them, like, really? you know, like, do you guys think that, you know, uh -huh. mom and dad would be equally happy for you, you know, if you're single? And we had a good conversation. That's so, awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. good to think about. And I think for a lot of us in the Asian American community, there's even more pressure because there's like a cultural layer yeah. to it, too. So yeah. I mean, I think coming from an immigrant family, I can't even imagine having that kind of conversation. Got it. Um, and I think many of us might feel the same way, right? Mm. Um, there's cultural expectations of having a family, yeah. continuing the family name, yeah. you know, yeah. um, bearing lots of children. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, so definitely added layer. Yeah. Um, I mean, one of the things I, I am curious too, uh, when it comes to your church yeah. and your ministry is, because one of the things I, I stress in the book is um, just the need for the church to be the family, right? right. And so, right. You know, um, do you feel like that's something that you guys have been working towards at your church? Mm. Um, do you think there's certain things that work and don't work? Right, yeah. right. Yeah, I think that has been a blessing of um, the culture at our church lighthouse. Um, I think from the beginning, you know, we all were on the same page that church is a family. It's not just, you know, a building or a place that we go mm -hmm. to on Sundays. So I really appreciate that about our church culture that we're trying to be a family. You know, mm -hmm. we are there for each other and not just to hear a message together, but um, to love one another. And I, it's a blessing to see, you know, when people are um, really thoughtful and kind and like they even physically invite singles, you yeah. know, to their family events or if they don't have somewhere to go on Christmas um, or holidays and things like that. Um, so I definitely can see how when your church has a culture of being a family, yeah. that that could be a blessing to the singles. Yeah. Um, but what's been your experience? Like, what, yeah. what are some things that have been helpful to you as a single in the church? Yeah. I mean, I think it's kind of a mixed experience. Mm. I think um, there's definitely been some families who have always had kind of like an open door policy mm. with me. You are welcome to join. Yeah. And even on the non-holidays, yeah. you know, like, come, yeah, our yeah, dinner yeah. table is open to you. Yeah. Um, so really emphasizing, like, we want to invite you into our daily lives, right? Because yeah. I feel like that is so meaningful. Yeah. Even come join, like, I don't have anything special prepared for you, but yeah. on this regular Wednesday evening, come, right. like, you know, see the chaos that is yeah. <laughs> sometimes our home. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that is such a special thing. Mm. Yeah. But I, really I have found that I do think that's like a cultural thing where it's a learned thing too, mm. you know? Um, I do think we live in such a busy and mm -hmm. um, self-centered world right. that it's hard, I think, for us to break out of that mold of only caring about our immediate family and right. who, what's in our home, right? right? Which is a good thing, right. but I think the church compels us to step away from that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So, think just yeah, inviting people into your lives. Um, mm -hmm. I was actually talking to a sister who she had some medical issues recently mm. um, and she's married with kids but she was saying her single friend reminded her like hey this is a season of life where i can really be there for you 
because totally. I don't have kids, yeah. I can drop everything and come to you. Yeah. And that really moved me because I thought, yeah, that is the role that this mm. particular member of the family of God can play in your life in right. that season right. that only she could play. Right. So I think just the fact that, yeah, God has different roles and, you know, jobs for everybody yeah. in the church and the family yeah. um, and singles can play a particular role. And so I think not even just being invited in to partake in family gatherings, but yeah. to partake in carrying each other's burdens, for right? Sure. To for sure. be invited in to, um, to care for the family, to fill the needs of the family, because that's how family works. Yeah. yeah. I can, that reminds me of like a friend that we had. So when we first started our church, it was so busy. We started church, then we had three kids. And so we had, you know, three kids under five at once. So I was a mess and we didn't have family who's close. So I didn't really have, you know, a lot of help with mm -hmm. our kids. So if there was ever, you know, something that Kim and my husband and I needed to be out together, it was, it was a challenge to mm -hmm. find, you know, someone to be with our, our kids. And there's this one sister, and I will never forget her. She was just always there for us and wanted to, and she was single, mm -hmm. and she didn't make it feel like a burden to mm -hmm. ask her. Mm -hmm. She, like, wanted to be a part of her family, and she still is part of our family. Yeah. But I'm so thankful for her, and I feel like she was, like, a great blessing to us yeah. and example of like oh like one way that you can really use yeah. your singleness for the Lord and yeah. his kingdom because that really enabled Kim and myself to do more ministry yeah, exactly. you know more things mm -hmm. uh, because she served in that way so that was such yeah. a blessing yeah I love that like you do the good and the bad of life together right like you invite people into the messiness and the not so perfect parts of your lives exactly but that's true family yeah. and I feel like yeah. the more we can really have that kind of culture in our churches, the right. more I think singles won't feel ostracized, but they'll really see their church as family. Yeah. yeah. What are some ways that you think that the church can grow in that area? Yeah, um, I mean, I think one, I do think a lot of stuff, a lot of culture in church is built top down. Right. So I do think pastors have to um, be an example of that, mm -hmm. right? Like, I, I do think the pastors and the leadership of the church have to be the first ones to say, like, open home, you know, like, right. invite people in, I'm going to care for singles. Um, and uh, again, I, I know that being a pastor's family is so much work mm -hmm. and a lot of burden. And so not to see it in a burdensome mm -hmm. way, but just, again, inviting people into the smallest parts of your day-to-day -day life, mm -hmm. right? Even if it's when I need someone to watch my kids yeah. for the night, like, invite them in. Yeah. Um, so I really think just pastor setting that tone and i also think you know it matters what's coming from the pulpit so yeah, yeah teaching yeah. a lot yeah. of emphasis on family being your church mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and as important as a nuclear family is just emphasizing that ultimately god's family is what's eternal right, right. and um this is where like life is to be done together right so definitely modeling that and teaching that I think is important. Yeah. 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 I've been, th I'm super thankful for our elders because I think they have done a good job of that. Just, you know, teaching our church family that we are a family. And I appreciate how like even in their preaching, um, like we've had actually specific messages on a Sunday mm -hmm. about singleness mm -hmm. to everybody. And those have been so good, mm -hmm. not just for singles, it's yeah. for marrieds too. Yeah. It shows, you know, teaches us how can we love and support and encourage the singles better. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate how they give examples that are not just to mar married yes. people or parents. You know, mm -hmm. it's, you know, when they're challenging us to look at our hearts or how can we apply the word, it's not only to a certain demographic, but they also give examples um, to singles, so I think that's been oh, helpful. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I feel like a lot of churches, the temptation is just to have like a one-off seminar about singleness. Right, But to right, be able right, to like right, right. preach a whole sermon right. on it on, from the pulpit, I feel like that's really meaningful. Yeah, it's really oh, helpful. I love that. In women's ministry, I got some good feedback that um, the ladies really were thankful when some of our speakers were um, single, single yeah. and they really could resonate, you know, with mm -hmm. the speaker more because, you know, they weren't just only using yeah. examples of their kids and uh, their families. So um, I think that's another way that hopefully leaders can encourage the singles. Yeah, I mean, even demonstrating that to be single, you can still have a fruitful ministry and be faithful in, in that season too. Right. Yeah. 
Sujan, it's been so nice talking yeah, to you. Thank, you. thank you for sharing your knowledge and no. look forward to applying it more. <laughs> thank you for sharing your experiences too.